The story begins with our main character, known as the Baskerville family's hound, Vikir van Baskerville. He was wrongly framed by his family and father for being friends with the demon clan, even though he was loyal to them, and was sentenced to death by guillotine. Vikir, at the moment of his death, thought to himself that if he were to ever live again, once he caught his prey, he would no longer live as a hound ever again. An unsettling scene surrounds Vikir as he tries to make sense of his environment. Feeling his body heavy and in an unknown and loud place, his first thought was that he was in hell. But it turns out to be the grand estate of the Baskerville family, babies are seen in their cribs, crying and making noises. A man, the patriarch of the Baskerville family, comments that the babies are insignificant. As he walks through the room, he could only see that there weren't any special children, only trash gathered around, but then he notices Vikir being silent compared to the other babies. He orders the servants to bring the babies to the cradle of swords, and the servants obey. Vikir recognizes the man as the main culprit behind his death in his previous life, Hugo Le Baskerville. Seeing Hugo's younger appearance, Vikir concludes that he has regressed to when he was a baby. Recalling his past life, Vikir had lived his past life as a hound, born from an illegitimate family and received training in a poor environment. Hounds must be devoted to missions like assassination, intelligence, ambushes and be threatening. A hound needs to take care of all kinds of dirty work. This was so the Baskerville family could remain the best among the seven families. Vikir remained loyal because he wanted to be acknowledged by the family and Hugo. However, ten years after the demonic gate was opened, even with the humans' victory over the demons, the reward that was given to the loyal hound, Vikir, who had served the family his whole life, was being put down like a simple dog. The main reason behind his execution was that he knew too much. Vikir clenches his fists, swearing never to live that life again. He wants to take revenge immediately but is unable to due to his baby's body and rolls around angrily. Vikir realizes that he needs to become stronger and that the Cradle of Swords is the perfect opportunity. The Cradle of Swords is a trial that every child in the Baskerville family must go through. Children are thrown into a maze of swords, where they need to reach the Styx River to be assessed for their talent. The Styx River is a legendary river that turns the bodies of children into iron but is limited in the number of children it can affect. Vikir recalls that the fastest route to the river is a straight path out of the helix-shaped wall of blades. He crawls past the swords, with blood covering his baby clothes, remembering that in his past life, he could not receive the effect of the river because of his siblings, which made him determined to make sure this time is different. Four men watch as Vikir dunks himself into the river, wanting to keep the Styx River's blessing all to himself for as long as possible. Vikir begins to sink into the river, the water seeps into his body and bones through the cuts being first made a huge difference. Vikir covers his mouth, as he was determined to endure for as long as he can, no matter how painful it was, he needed to endure it. Two servants shout at Vikir to come out of the water, warning him that he was going to die if he stays underwater any longer. Hugo simply laughs, he asks Barrymore, the head butler, how much time has passed. Barrymore replies that around seven minutes have passed. Hugo is amused, stating that Vikir might die since seven minutes have passed. Hugo calls out to Vikir, calling him his son and asks him to come out. Vikir ignores Hugo's calls and continues to absorb the power of the river with all his might, even sucking in the water of the river through his baby mouth. But then he loses control, his eyes turning white as he continues to himself to endure the pain before blacking out. Hugo holds Vikir by the foot, stating that staying in the river wasn't enough for the baby and that he even drank its water. Hugo notices that Vikir has already grown his teeth. Hugo asks Barrymore what the child's name is. Barrymore replies, Vikir van Baskerville. With a smile on his face, Hugo speaks Vikir's name, saying that a very greedy son has been born. While being held upside down, Vikir continues to plot his revenge against Hugo, waiting to sharpen his canines for the time when he can rip his head off, promising that the Baskerville family will disappear into history by his own hands. Vikir van Baskerville was Hugo Le Baskerville's bastardized son, who was also known to be a genius at the age of eight but was considered normal in his family. At 20 years old, he took on assassination, espionage, and conquest-type missions. At 29, he felt the limits of his swordsmanship compared to others in the direct lineage of the family. At 30 years of age, the demonic realm gate was opened, marking the beginning of the demon's clan invasion. At 35 years of age, he endured the era of destruction, slaughtering monsters left and right. At 39 years of age, the long war finally came to an end with the victory of the human realm. At 40 years of age, Vikir was finally rewarded for his loyalty. The reward? Defamation, false accusation, and the guillotine's blade. 
Vikir opens his eyes, looking at the ceiling, realizing it is a nursery. He flips over in excitement as this means he has successfully absorbed the power of the Styx River, which meant that he was at a better starting point in his life than before. A servant approaches and places a box in Vikir's crib, questioning why the madam would give such a thing. Vikir wonders why anyone would give him a gift. The box opens slowly, with a dark mist coming out of it. Vikir is taken aback as a long, dark figure slithers out of the box. Vikir recognizes it as a viper called Bloody Mamba, realizing that the madam had sent rare vipers here to kill him. Knowing who madam is, as there are only a few that are called that in the family, which meant she sent those snakes to reduce the competition. The vipers hiss at Vikir, who knew that these things were capable of killing all of the babies in the nursery. But to our surprise, Vikir quickly grabs both vipers by the throat while smiling widely like a blood-driven hound, expecting such treatment from the Baskervilles. He strangles the vipers with force, thinking to bring down the family with his own two hands. Bloodstains are seen on the bedsheet of the crib as the vipers no longer made any sound. The next day, the servants are shocked, seeing Vikir sleeping soundly while surrounded by the dead bodies of the deadly vipers which had been ripped to pieces. Orders were given to execute the nannies after being tortured, the ones on shift the night the vipers came, but the reason for their appearance remains unknown. Only Vikir knew the truth. Eight years later, Vikir sits in class, listening to a lecture. The teacher talks about the different levels of swordsmanship. Those who cannot yet imbue the sword with mana, are considered a sword beginner. The level at which you can infuse the blade with a little bit of mana is called sword expert. When the blade emits mana in liquid-like aura form, that is sword graduator. The final level, where the aura is solid and its form freely changeable, is called the sword master. The teacher notes that the strongest member of the Baskervilles, Sir Hugo, is at the sword master level. The children are in awe of this fact. Knowing that Hugo was already a sword master at this point in time, Vikir thinks to himself that he needs to regain his strength that he had, just like in his previous life, before his coming of age ceremony. The teacher notices Vikir being lost in thought again and highlights his achievements. Having a strong body due to diving in the Styx River for seven minutes, and teaching him one thing would lead him to understand a hundred things. He is more talented than the others, and the patriarch would be happy with this. While Vikir thinks about how long it will take to kill Hugo at the age of eight, a set of triplets grins widely as they stare at him, their eyes red with a scary thought in their heads. A hand shoves Vikir as he is being called garbage van, it turns out to be the triplets. Having heard the strange rumors about Vikir being in the river for seven minutes and strangling two vipers when he was a baby, they approach him. Vikir remains silent as he recalls his memories of these three, knowing they were the ones who stabbed him when he was running away due to the defamation in his previous life. They were called the Hugo Le Baskerville Trident, we'll simply call them high, middle, and low, all nine years old. They shout at Vikir to stop lying, stating they don't like him. Knowing they'll be troublesome in the future, Vikir decides that it was a good idea to put them in their place now. High points a knife at Vikir, stating that Vikir's body was like steel since he was in the river for so long, making him immune to injuries from blades. High asks if he can test it. High calls low. Low covers Vikir's mouth to stop him from breathing, stating he will eat his hand if Vikir endures for three minutes. Vikir decides to play along with their scheme, realizing that even children could be cruel. One minute passes, as High and Middle believe the rumor is fake. Three minutes pass, and they realize Vikir is good. Ten minutes pass, and they are too stunned to speak, realizing that the rumors about Vikir were actually true. They decide to let Vikir go, since it was no longer fun for them to mess with him. But then a crunching sound is heard as Low looks at his hand, and blood appears. Vikir spits as Low screams in pain. High and Middle shout at Vikir, asking what he is doing. Vikir, with bright red eyes and blood all over his mouth, gives the triplets a creepy smile, repeating that Lo said he would eat his hand if he holds on for more than three minutes. High and Middle refute by saying they aren't scared of Vikir, but Lo is afraid as he holds his bleeding hand. High and Middle stare at Lo in disbelief, who complains to them that he had gotten his finger bitten off. They attempt to leave to find a priest to fix Lo's hand, but Vikir stops them. In anger, High stabs Vikir in the stomach, stating they are older than him. To his surprise, the knife doesn't cut him. Vikir twists his arm in response to the sudden attack, causing High to scream in pain, while he reminds them that they were a part of the Baskerville clan, where power and talent are greater than age. High continues to scream in pain as Vikir twists his hand. Vikir, in hound mode with his blood-red glowing eyes, grins widely and tells them that they were going to play with him till the very end. High, in pain, 
shouts that the rumors are true as Vikir lets go of his hand, before giving him a punch straight to the face. Middle and Low are shocked as High falls to the ground with his teeth broken and nose bleeding. Middle attempts to fight, but Vikir simply kicks him to the side with no effort. Low stumbles onto the ground, shocked at what has happened. Vikir tells him not to be afraid, as he'll get better in no time once treated. But he warns him, as he picks the knife off the floor, that he won't be leaving the room and that they have to live with the discomfort of their own bodies at this rate. Vikir decides to be generous and offers one of them a chance to leave the room right now as he stares at the knife in his hand. Lo asks which of them could leave, as the other two brothers hold onto their wounds. The knife is tossed to them as Vikir tells them to decide among themselves. Vikir slowly exits the room, mentioning he can't wait too long and that it should be decided quickly. With blood red eyes and a grin on his face, Vikir turns to them as the door closes, saying at least one of them should live. As the door closes, the triplets are left in shock but soon stare at one another. Sounds of fighting and yelling are heard behind the doors as Vikir stands listening, smiling. The trident of Baskerville was beginning to split apart. In another part of the estate, Barrymore reports to Hugo that another bloody situation has occurred with the Morgue clan regarding the ruby mines, with the Morgue clan stating it was theirs. Hugo says an opportunity in the future will allow them to discuss it properly and wonders what else there is to report. In regards to the interim evaluation of the juvenile fortress, Barrymore reports that Vikir scored the highest in the written exam. Hugo smiles happily at that fact and wonders when the practical exam will happen for the children at the juvenile fortress. In five days, guardian knights have left to prepare, Barrymore replies, making the fortress completely empty now. Barrymore hesitates at first but further reports that there was a big fight between the young masters, stating that there were no deaths, but that High's teeth have been completely damaged, Middle's jaw was smashed in, and Lowe's left index finger was amputated. They had recovered from their physical injuries, but their mental state was damaged. Hugo is surprised to hear that the triplets were fighting amongst themselves, as they were close with one another. Barrymore states that Vikir was involved, causing Hugo to be alarmed. Vikir stands before Hugo and Barrymore with a huge smile on his face. He greets Hugo as the patriarch. Hugo tells Vikir about how he disabled the triplets. Vikir replies that they have received the proper medical treatment since then. But Hugo wasn't interested in their physical states, instead he talked about how their hearts were disabled. Since the day of the beating, the triplets were no longer eating or talking together anymore, making their combination technique completely fall apart since their relationship was practically non-existent, Vikir smiles silently after hearing that, after all, his plan worked. Hugo asks if it was wrong that Vikir turned his brothers into a total mess. Vikir, with a cold dead look in his eyes, replies that he was simply stronger and wonders if the stronger person is ever wrong. Hugo shares that his brothers came before and forgave him, so he questions Vikir whether he feels an ounce of shame. Vikir couldn't believe that the triplets actually forgave him, which made him recall a past memory where the youngest daughter of a family that was ruined by the Baskerville clan came and paid Hugo a visit. She had become a nun after many years, and told Hugo she forgave him and offered him a mass. Hugo's response after that mass was, as Vikir speaks out loud, forgiveness is just an excuse made by the weak who cannot seek revenge due to their lack of strength. Vikir's eyes glow red with a unique shine as he speaks those words. Hugo is elated at what was said, smiling widely with the same look in his eyes. Hugo recites the family motto, only the strong will reign supreme, weakness is a sin. Hugo rewards Vikir by allowing him to take any snack from the food storage, just enough for him to carry. Vikir is happy and asks for chocolate, thanking the patriarch for the reward. As he turns to leave, Hugo calls him his son and tells him to do well on the interim evaluation, not to lose to direct descendants. Vikir is disgusted by what he hears but replies, yes, my lord, anyway. In the storage room of the clan, Barrymore introduces the infamous chocolate enjoyed by the gourmands of the Mord clan, saying it's of the highest quality and hard to get. Vikir declines it, saying he needs cacao beans that have a rich aroma. Barrymore and the chefs are confused by the request. Cacao beans, colored purple and called bloody beans, are given to Vikir as the chef explains to him that these bloody beans were known for their rich aroma. Each bean can produce 100 liters of chocolate. Vikir tastes them and is appalled by their bitterness. Barrymore wonders to himself if Vikir really likes chocolate enough to eat such bitter beans on their own, thinking Vikir was brilliant for finding a way to get chocolate even with the restrictions placed by the patriarch. The chef asks if he wants to process the beans, but Vikir declines and takes them as is. Barrymore wonders if Vikir has such a weird taste. However, 
Vikir did not get the bloody beans to turn them into chocolate to eat but to use them in the practical exam five days later. Up in the mountains, Vikir stands, grinning widely, knowing that a huge catastrophe will occur, something that has never happened in the clan before. In this world, the Baskerville family is referred to as the Berserker family. Children of the Baskerville family are put through strenuous events and early education from a young age. When they are able to take their first steps, for their basic stamina, they need to run up a steep mountain. Except for certain exceptions, they are never allowed to lie down or be on their stomachs. When it's time to sleep, in order to adjust to tough environments, they can only sleep alongside a monster corpse, no teddy bear or pillows like most of us. When that period ends, they turn eight years old, and the young hounds will start their deadly evaluation. This is what caused the Baskerville family to be called the Berserker family. This brings us to the practical evaluation, a survival exam, in a mountain, that's located on the outskirts of the territory, filled with monsters. The young masters are gathered in a territory at the far end of the La Rouge at Le Noir mountain. Pavlov, the instructor of the exam and a member of the Shadow Dogs, informs them that the basic contents of the practical evaluation is simple. He instructs the masters on what needs to be done, survive for one month while hunting large and strong monsters. They needed to be mindful of these two conditions and survive. 10 points are given for surviving. 30 if they survive without being disabled. Failing others and surviving gives them 50 points. Surviving after defeating a monster, 70 points. If all conditions mentioned are met, 90 points. In addition, stealing badges from others makes their points yours. Dying results in 0 points. 100 points do not exist. Pavlov reminds them of Hugo's lesson. A swordsman dies when they become arrogant. He advises them not to leave the designated area, as the mountain contains many undiscovered things. It was recommended that they move within the given space where they had subjugated the monsters. During the exam, shadow dogs also known as guardian knights will be hiding and grading them. But as Pavlov was giving out the instructions, gossip spreads amongst the candidates as they talk of the rumors about Vikir, where he had survived for more than six minutes in the Styx River and that he had killed two poisonous vipers when he was a baby, even scoring full marks in the theory exam making them wonder if he was going to be good at the practical as well. Vikir smiles as he remembers the mountain, after all, it's been some time since he was here from his previous life. The triplets avoid looking at him, Pavlov rings the bell, marking the start of the exam, and prays for their fortune. The young masters instantly vanish, each with a plan of their own. One of the young masters was eager to occupy an advantageous area, and decided on the place he saw in last year's exam. While other young masters decide to team up and steal the badges from others while following them. The triplets argue with one another, deciding on doing things on their own instead of helping one another like before. The moment the young masters all left, Pavlov took out a single cigarette, noting that the exam has officially begun, as he takes a puff, he notes that killing is not prohibited but discouraged instead. After all, if they killed someone else, they would be deducted points, so everyone usually tries their best in order not to kill someone easily. Pavlov smokes a cigarette, as the wind lifts his fringe, revealing a nasty scar across his left eye, he knows that the shadow dogs will do their best in order to keep casualties to a minimum. A shadow dog follows Vikir, wondering where he is going as the area they were at was next to the restricted area. This shadow dog was actually looking forward to seeing Vikir's skills due to his previous achievements since childhood. Vikir arrives at a huge tree, poking at the ground to check as the soft ground is best. He decides to live and take a break here as the shadow dog watches him. The shadow dog is shocked at Vikir taking a break. Vikir gathers wood and starts building things like in Minecraft while the others fight amongst themselves. Even the triplets ended up fighting with a bear together. Meanwhile, T the shadow dog is in disbelief as Vikir simply gathers resources, wondering if he plans to just hide here. The shadow dog decides to leave, thinking that the rumors about Vikir were all fake. After thinking that Vikir was just going to hide during the exam, the shadow dog decides that there was no point in following him and leaves. The moment he does, Vikir could sense that the shadow dog has left. He was glad that the shadow dog was finally gone. Looking at the campfire while he cooks a meal, Vikir recalled how camping like this reminded him of his old days. Before, a subordinate had told Vikir that cacao beans make fish less smelly, and that bloody beans were the best since they had a high concentration of cacao. Vikir stares into the flames and smoke, knowing he has finished preparing deciding to start hunting as pits of spears surround him. The time to hunt was now. A few days pass as Vikir walks into the restricted area. Looking around, he knew that from this point onwards, it was the unknown restricted area. 
In his previous life as a scout, Vikir could walk around here casually. As he ventures deeper into the unknown area, Vikir could smell something that pierced his nose, along with some burnt tree roots which made him realize that what he was looking for was around here somewhere. The sound of something sizzling in the middle of the night catches his attention as he turns to look at what it was. Our boy finds burning poop, yes, poop is on fire in this world, meaning only one monster has that kind of poop in this area. Vikir looks at something with a smile, back in his scouting days, the thing he was looking at was pretty annoying, but right now, in the present, he was actually happy to find it. A beast with flames in its mouth stands above Vikir, a hellhound. The hellhound is a beast that swallowed the hellfires of the oil world, causing its body to become one with flames. Vikir was barely able to defeat one at the age of 18 in his past life. Being eight years old now, it is impossible for him to defeat it now. However, Vikir, thanks to his past life, knows a way where even a child can take on a hellhound. He dashes towards the hellhound, knowing that one of its weaknesses is that it moves in straight lines only, making it hard to change directions but easy to dodge as he slides underneath the hellhound. The hellhound is stunned that Vikir dodged. Vikir opens a bottle of water, spraying it across the ground, another weakness for hellhounds, they cannot step across any volume of water, no matter how deep the water is. This causes the hellhound to take a detour to avoid the water on the ground as it runs towards Vikir. Thanks to the water, it exposes another weakness that all canines have, opening its mouth while running. Vikir takes a step back as the hellhound lunges at him with its mouth open, the exact moment Vikir has waited for. Vikir flicks something into its mouth and easily dodges the hellhound as it tries to circle back to Vikir. However, the hellhound feels something is wrong and stumbles to the ground, whimpering. Vikir reveals that chocolate is poison to canines, and since one bloody bean can make 100 liters of chocolate, it is the ultimate poison for it. The hellhound lays on the ground, whimpering, unable to move. Vikir walks towards it, drawing his sword, looking for where the ribs aren't present to target its kidney as that was its weak spot. The area of weakness turns out to be its kidney. The hellhound whimpers in pain as the sword pierces its body. Vikir delivers the final blow, and a blue essence forms from the body. It is called XP or Karma, created when you catch monsters after energy accumulates in their bodies, making them stronger. Vikir absorbs it, making the short sword he wields lighter. Vikir is happy, knowing he'll be able to catch up to his regression state before he is of age. He wonders what face Hugo will make when he finds out that an 8-year-old brought back a monster with a risk rating of B+. With this monster, Vikir secures first place in the practical test and has decided on what reward to get. An enormous reward that he would never dream of asking for in his previous life. He was going to take a certain book, the value of which no one in this era really knows, except for him. Vikir proceeds to decapitate the head of the hellhound but senses a presence behind him. He turns to see four more hellhounds. Oh hell no, he wonders if they came because of its cries and that they want to avenge it. Vikir chops off the head of the dead hellhound, excited at the thought of fighting more hellhounds as he never planned on just killing one of them, he even still has more beans left. However, a bigger presence is felt by the hellhounds, and Vikir notices. Believing the hellhounds to be afraid of his bloodthirst, the hellhounds bow their heads in fear. But hellhounds never submit, even if they are to die. Vikir realizes something and turns around to see a three-headed figure. This dog monster was different as its aura was purple along with whatever is coming out of it. A Cerberus? Vikir is alarmed as it has a risk rating of A+, plus but was supposed to be at the seventh ridge. Why is it here on the first? Vikir thinks. Vikir then notices wounds and blood dripping from its body. Multiple arrows and other injuries are inflicted upon the beast upon closer inspection, which meant that someone else was hunting this beast down. Vikir concludes that it's because of the barbarian tribes across the mountain, as it was their territory, and that the Cerberus came all this way because it was being chased by them. Vikir sees the chance of a lifetime, to hunt an injured A-plus beast. He must kill it no matter what. Vikir has been hiding his power back at the Baskerville household, this includes the fact that he had mastered the third Baskerville technique and being at a high level as a sword expert. Our boy has already reached a level that no other hounds would attain when they became adults. Vikir covers his blade in aura and dashes to the injured Cerberus. He attempts to slice one of its heads but is interfered with by another head. He slices it in reaction. Upon slicing it, Vikir realizes that killing it is possible. Before his regression, due to the war with demons, Vikir was able to polish his swordsmanship to the point that there was no sign of unnecessary movements in his techniques. Add to that his strengthened body from the Styx River. All the weapons Vikir possessed was working well against the Cerberus. 
but that's what he thought. Reality hits him hard as the Cerberus lands a deadly blow on Vikir, smashing his sword to bits. Vikir had let his guard down for a moment, resulting in a deadly blow from its claws. Vikir is flung straight into a tree. He coughs blood as his eyes turn white from the impact. Thanks for watching the latest part from the voice of Manwa. Subscribe for more content and don't forget to comment below what you want to see in the future. Like and share for more.